Are you nervous? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone that does this. Yes. <laughs> What's up, YouTubers? It's Nick here with Real Talk with Nick, and today I have a special guest uh, for our meet and greet. My beautiful friend, uh, Miss Del Abuyo. Hello. Um, the archetype that we're gonna uh, discuss is the touring professional, and yeah. Um, I met Belle a while ago. We danced together a couple years and honestly, I wanted to highlight her because she has the most beautiful spirit ever. Um, ever since I met her and have known her, just a genuine, kind, loving person. And I wanted um, you guys to meet her and also highlight her story. But introduce yourself and Hello. what do you do? Hi, my name is Belle. I'm from San Diego, California. Currently, I live in Los Angeles, California. Yeah, and I am a touring professional, um, which is basically a roadie for those of you that don't know what that means. But I have various jobs, a couple different departments that I work in. But basically, I participate in the execution of a live stage performance. Okay. Um, Concerts mostly. Yeah. What 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 do you, what do you do? Uh, a couple of different things. When I started out in this industry, I was working as a, a wardrobe assistant. So basically dressing dancers on tour, uh, but working in wardrobe, the execution, the making sure all the outfits got from one place to the next, that they were clean and nice. they were all accounted for. So the, the manual execution of that, yeah. actually putting it on the dancers. Uh, what are some of the tours that you've been uh, on? My first big artist, the first A-list artist I worked for was Jay-Z, addressed his band nice. uh, when he opened up the Barclay Center like, a few years back. So we had like eight shows in Brooklyn or something like that. Uh, after that, uh, I worked for Lady Gaga's dancers. Um, since then, I've worked with Selena Gomez, Madonna, Ariana Grande, Prince. I got to work with Woo! Prince. Got I worked him. on his um, his actual. Got to sew some of his clothes. It was oh, incredible. Shoot. Yeah, not sew them, but like repairs yeah. wow. or add in extra, you know, fabric or whatever. Yeah. Was. Worked for him for a little bit. My first, my first wardrobe gig was for Jabwa, so that sort of like, kind of right. got the ball rolling. It exposed me to an industry that I actually never knew existed. Yeah. And that sort of it was a tipping point for me. Right. To me, uh, it sounds glamorous Ooh. from the outside. Yeah. <laughs> How glamorous <laughs> is not that glamorous? <laughs> what are some of the challenges um, or uh, some things we don't know uh, about being on tour and? Well, people know we live on a bus, basically. Okay. So, depends if you have back-to-back -back shows, you're going from venue, like, let's say we get off work at 1 a.m., and then I have to be at work 8 o'clock the next morning. So, the bus will drive overnight, go straight to work, and I have to get off the bus at sometimes 6 o'clock in the morning, sometimes 9 o'clock. Depends on the job I'm doing. But So, you're literally showering in the locker rooms at the arena or the stadium or whatever, at the venue. You get on your bus, and you go to sleep while it's rolling. Oh shoot. And hopefully get rest because you're at work the next day. So I get yeah. off the bus, find a bathroom, brush my teeth. Oh. Probably don't put on makeup. I remember yeah. one time, but then, so you can do that up to like, like this tour I'm gonna about to go on does that six days in a row. So it's one thing to go to work six days in a row, but with your same bed and your same right. shower and all of your things where they are. Yeah. This is living out of your suitcase and showering in a different place every night and sleeping in like, this tiny little thing that feels like a coffin sometimes. Oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah. So that's the challenge. So you're not on a king bed with cucumbers on your no, eyes? No, no. Sometimes <laughs> we get to do that. Okay. It's like, you know, if you're on a tour that doesn't work back to back, maybe you're overseas and we fly to each different destination. Right. Then you're going to an airport every day, which is still tiresome. But you will have a hotel that night. So yeah. It's just, it's a trade, you know what I mean? Like, sometimes you get hotel. Most times you'll get hotel. Nice. nice. So, um, there is a lot of viewers watching um, because of time, because of money. Uh, they want to pursue their dreams. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you're pursuing your dreams. What are some tips and advice you can mm -hmm. give them? I guess, well, you taught me about archetypes. So the biggest advice would be, I think, find what that is. Find what makes you happy. I think I learned a lot of it in church. They always said, like, you know, God wants you to find what you're made for. You're not... He didn't design us to go to work and punch a clock and come right. back and just live that like sort of like a circle, a yeah. circle. And I did that for a while. I remember it. my car went to the same place every day and then it drove to the same place every night. And I was like, dude, 
I'm so tired. I didn't even do anything. Barely saw friends during the week. On the weekends, I would try to do things, you know. Right. But I think it's finding things that like really make you happy. Where mm -hmm. and and what kind of stuck out to me or what let me know I was doing that is like in those moments when I was working, I wasn't aggravated. I wasn't irritated. My mind wasn't wandering. I was fully in that job at that moment, and it was exciting, you know. Um, I think you also have to do the work. When I when I saw this wardrobe and career happening, I knew I wanted to do it, but I didn't have the skills. People a lot of, in, in the beginning, they would be, oh, we love you, you're great, can you sew? I'd say no every time, because mm. technically at that time, I did not know how to sew. Right. Um, so after that tour was over and I realized that's what I wanted to do, that was a, the career I wanted to pursue, maybe styling, maybe designing my own clothes, whatever it is, but I had to do the work and learn how to sew. Right. Like when we were first dancers, it made me think too, like, when we were first dancers, I remember going to Mesa College and like uh, seeing all the really good people. I want to be like them. And realizing the difference between me and them is that they studied ballet, they studied jazz, they studied tap, they, yeah. they immersed themselves in dance and that's how they were better. So then that started me training in all different kinds of, you know, back in the day, we were in every class Mesa College offered. Every class I took it until they kicked me out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So do the work. Find out, I think, what makes you really happy. I don't think that we should go to work. We spend so much time like at our jobs. Forty hours a week minimum, right? For most people. Why be unhappy? Why do something that doesn't like right. fill your spirit? It's a win win if you can go make that money and be happy inside too. Yeah. You know? That's beautiful that you said that. Um, that's what I teach my clients too of you gotta make a living. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, how do you not lose yourself and your spirit? And how do you still nurture that part of yourself? Any tips that you can give to young people wanting to get into? I know it's so glamorous right now. Everyone wants to be on tour. I want to be a backup yeah. dancer. And I, I want to work with celebrities. And I don't know. Yeah. I, what I don't advice know. can you give? Um, I don't know if going into it, I, I purposely wanted to work with celebrities. I think it's enticing for all of us to say yeah. like, oh, I worked with this person and I was on tour with that person and then I've been to Istanbul and all these yeah. crazy places. <laughs> but it took hard work to get there. You know, I, I, I did the work. I think I want to say the consistent thing for me was to be a good person and be kind to everyone around me all the time. And I think that that was the, the underlying sort of quality that keeps getting me work. I work yeah. really hard every time I go to a job, and I know that each job has always um, got me the next. So I haven't been in this industry and worked only for the same people. A couple production managers that consistently hire me, but um, it was the ability to go in and not, not only do my job, but, but be kind to people in the process. That's, I think, what stood out. It wasn't so much my skills as a, as a sewing you know, seamstress, or my skills and the ability to put a good room together or design a space was also because they knew I was always going to give 110% when I was there and I did it with a smile on my face, kindness to them. I was always trying to help. Like if I, and even now I, I always try to remember, like if I see someone walking down the hallway and they look stressed out or at, so often they're running down with all these packages, hey, let me help you. I'm walking that way, let me, you know what I mean? And just helping people out, I think that. Yeah. And this is helpful. not like the bullshit kindness because I'm trying to get something out of you. No, no. Genuine kindness. Genuine, like, like um, we learned in church a long time ago that God wants us to love our neighbor like ourselves. That kind of love. Do you right. know what I mean? If I was that person, and many times I've been that person, struggling, and people walk right past me. Or people will come and they'll be like, let me help you. And accepting that help. Because the stubborn part of me is, I was like, no, I got it. It's my job. I have to do it. But now saying, sure, take these two packages. Walk with me, friend. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just making it a good experience. Yeah. So just by being a good person, you're building relationships mm -hmm. and giving you more opportunities. Mm -hmm. And people remember that. Mm. That's what stood out. Was people remember that. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's a beautiful <laughs> And then what's um, moving forward? What's in the works for you? Mm. Or uh, it's kind of, it's intense. I, I, my plan in my mind, I said, okay, I'm going to tour for two more years, then magically like find a companion and get married and have kids. Right. And that's the plan. But 
now I'm being presented with opportunities that could possibly bring me off the road this year. Right. Different, like diff cultivating different work. So I'm not really sure what the future holds. I know that I love interior design. I know that now we talked about archetypes. I'm a teacher, um, an artist, and I'll find the rest of the 10 archetypes. But yeah. So that'll help. But I don't know. I just know that I right now am in a space where I'm kind of nervous and scared. Because uh, it's new and it's uncharted, and I have to go there. Yeah, can you explain <laughs> that? Because there's a lot of people watching, and in my sessions too, clients will come in and uh, they have an opportunity for growth, an opportunity for something, their life to change, but I'm scared. Yeah. I'm terrified. That, somewhere along the lines, I learned that that's the part that you need to go to. So if it scares you a little bit, do it. You have to do it. Like we talked about now not jumping off a bridge. If, you know, if bungee jumping makes you scared. Probably don't bungee jump. <laughs> but um, but when it comes to like life situations like that, when I find myself like, oh, it's scared. I don't want to make this phone call and schedule these. I, I have meetings to go to later this week that I'm nervous about. I don't know how what's going to happen. But I will tell you, every time I've taken that risk, it's always been a good. Good. It's never come out bad. I've never walked away from those risks and said, oh gosh, I wish I didn't do that. I really fucked that one over. You know yeah. what I mean? None of that's always been good. Right. So I think when when you are weighing between two different things, I could go to work or I could c cultivate, you know, I could keep touring for two more years and see what happens or I could cultivate this work that's already putting itself in my lap. That makes yeah. me nervous. Knowing that I could do tour for the next two years and then figure it out, that doesn't make me scared because right. I know what that life is like. But here, I'm nervous. This could pull me off the road. And then I don't know what it's like to be at home again and work uh, from home, even though that's what I want to do. Right. But so I found myself like, okay, this is scary and it makes me nervous. To me, that's a signal. That's where you need to be going. That's beautiful. So if you're scared, do it. Towards it. Yeah. And also, I, I think like it builds confidence too. If you look at if you make a list like of all the things that frighten you, so I, I, I am afraid to talk to people. I'm afraid of heights. I'm afraid uh, of being alone. I'm afraid of all these things. And if you took that whole list, physically wrote it down, and then attacked it, talked to a new person every day, did a bungee jump, or you know, jumped off of a plane or something like, but if you did those things, by the time you got to the bottom of the list, you'll come off with so much more confidence. So I always am afraid to do certain things, but once I do them, I come out strong. What's your favorite tour? Uh, my favorite tour so far was probably Selena Gomez. Oh, yeah, because what? the people, I made a lot of good friends that are friends to this day. I mean, it's so easy to be on tour and be in conversation or live with these people for six months and then go back home. They live in Nashville or, you know, Atlanta or somewhere else and never see them again, really. Mm -hmm. But on Selena, not only was she an incredible boss, so kind, um, but the people that I met are still my friends. There's nice. quite a few people on that tour that are still like in my phone and we hang out and it's cool. What do you want to say to them? To the nice people or? Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so <Asian>. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you. you. <laughs> because <laughs> it was kind. I mean, it's, it's so lonely out there. Mm. It can be. You work so hard, so hard, so hard every day to not have the creature comforts of even just like a friend. It's rare, so it was nice to, that there was many moments when I was stressed out and crying and wanted to quit or didn't understand why this person was being destructive towards me. And it took that one friend to just hug it out. Cool, let's hug it out. They understood. We hugged it out. And then that person was still mean to me. The other person was still being destructive. Yeah. But knowing that someone could just hug it out with me or talk to me and understand, it was a big deal. And then... Um... Being in this kind of environment where, again, it seems so glamorous, mm -hmm. um, you're dealing with high-end people and mm -hmm. you're dealing with people uh, all walks of life mm -hmm. and things are moving so fast. How do you hold a sense of self in this mm -hmm. kind of world? Mm -hmm. How do you not lose belt? I think I never really get, what's well, weird. What I want to say off top is I, I don't really get too attached you know what I mean? I don't take things too personal. Selena was a very nice person, but even not taking that like, oh, now she's my best friend and she knows me. It's work. It's, you know what I mean? I'm grateful that she was 
thankful and kind to me, you know what I mean? But I'm also there to do a job. And, and I think I recently just started implementing goal setting. So making sure that, I guess one huge way that I lost myself on previous tours was gaining a lot of weight because you're <laughs> catering every day and there's literally donuts and coffee every morning. Nice. The Mexican in me loves good coffee and a pastry. So, but indulging in that every morning, then you gain weight and then you're not as sharp as you need to be for the next day. You're more tired. Um, exercising on this last tour and, and really it was just this, I was just got off tour and I was on tour for a month and I started healthy eating habits, but I always 100% failed at them when I got on tour. Right. So I made the conscious effort to exercise as much as I can, let everyone else know, no, I'm on a good, I'm on a plan. Right. And I'm not going to have that with you guys. But I'll have a salad when we go out. Yeah. I'll have, you know what I mean? I'll go out with you guys, but I'm not going to just drink. hang out. Yeah, yeah I'll just hang out. I got to work out first, then I'll see you guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? Things like that. So I think uh, part of it was like goal setting for myself, thinking about what's really important to me. Right. So it sounds like to the um, formula for success is kind of you need discipline mm -hmm. and a schedule. Mm -hmm. You need to be a kind person, a real kind person, not yeah. because you're wanting to get something out of it mm -hmm. and also just again being fully present and being a good person yeah. and building relationships yeah and enjoy, like enjoy yeah really yeah. enjoy genuinely just, enjoy what you're yeah. doing and who you're with yeah and regardless of the environment you can be on a amazing tour or you can be working anywhere a call you can. center <laughs> why did you say call center because i worked at a call center for three years how did you answer the phone Thank you for calling Thank Beach Body. This is Belle. Okay. Ready to get in the best shape of your life, sir? <laughs> All day yeah. is so annoying. But again, those are habits wherever you are. If you're still a kind person, that yeah. will carry yeah. with you. Yeah, and I think across any platform, work, um, family life, friends, a grocery store, you know what I mean? Yeah. Even things like um, when you're walking down the street and someone passes you, Make a conscious effort to look them in the eyes and smile. That's kind of rare nowadays too. You know, on tour, you don't just walk by someone in the hallway and it's, it's rude. I've, I've been on the tour with you for six fucking months. You're not gonna say hi to me? Walk down the hallway? That's so rude. You know what I mean? You don't have to yeah. like have a full blown conversation with every single person, but even just small kindnesses like that, like greeting someone, helping them carry a package. It goes a long way. Like I said, people remember that. I know I remember that. I think he was so nice, he totally helped me. We have never spoke before, right. but he totally helped me carry the bags and I really needed help yeah. that time. And that can shift your whole day. Yeah. Your whole... yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. For you and that person. Right. So yeah, <laughs> as you can see, this is why I wanted to highlight Belle. Um, ever since I met her, these uh, themes has always showed up. The kindness, the compassion, of being fully present, having discipline, and she's amazing, and I wish you Thank nothing you. but the best. <laughs> How do people get a hold of you? Can they follow you? Can I yeah. uh, stalk you on Instagram? You can if you want I'm to. I'm trying to book you. <laughs> what do I do? Uh, I'm working on getting content for like a website. It's okay. safe for work to solicit work and you know show those things, but I'm on Instagram and Facebook, Belle Abuyo, B-E-L-L-E-A-B-U-I-O. That's it, find yeah. me, welcome. I like to, um, Thing about social media and kind of my purpose with it for the last few years is to document um, and show you guys like what it looks like from my side and where I'm at. Mostly because my family, it's easier to post something online than to call them and say, oh, I'm in blah, 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 blah. So I try to share my, I, I, I fall off, I'm not the best social media person at this point, but I try to share my experiences with you guys and show you what it's like from my side, what backstage might look like or what an off day might look like or, you know, a work day. Thing. Can people say hi to you? Yeah, of course. Why? You're not going to delete them? No. <laughs> I thought I saw you on the interview. Hey. Daily. <laughs> no, yeah, not but so follow her, follow her journey, and feel free to contact her. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> three times. Yes. Just three months. Thank you. Thank you.